came here, I've shared my stories. I was laughed at for sharing my stories. Hey, no, the shame. He go come for social media. He's sharing her story. He said, My father beat my mother. Let's forget. Let's be honest. The hypocrisy. And now we're here, all Sinachi is dead, and people are talking. Everybody is talking. What happened to those that spoke and shared their story? Guess what? Right now, all Sinachi's children. Osnachi's children are just like myself. When they open a YouTube channel tomorrow and share the story about how their father beat their mother, somebody will say, you're sharing your, you have no shame. You're sharing by your parents. And now some people are saying, why do people not talk? What have you people, what have people done to those of us that spoke? Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Summer. So in this video, I want to talk about this uh, opera about um, Osinachi Mwachuku that uh, lost her life in the hands of her, uh, allegedly in the hands of uh, the man that she's married to. And um, I, I, you know, the opera is amazing, right? You know, I, I would like to make this video because to be honest, this opera is amazing. This, everybody speaking with the same voice and saying, well, most of us, you know, most people speaking with the same voice and condemning this action and speaking up against it and all that, it's absolutely amazing. But at the same time, I want to speak on the fact that you know, this news is fresh, everybody is, you know, feeling it and speaking up and everything. But sadly, give it a few weeks, if not even a few days. Before you know it, everybody go enter the house and as if it never happened. Because this is not, let's be honest, it's not the first time things like this have happened. We, after a while, people become desensitized to the story and move on. And then the next one will happen. In one week, two women, one, the one that came from Scotland, the husband put petrol for fire and she exited. We have not even finished digesting that news and then boom the story of Osinachi. There's been a lot of stories about things like this in the past But I want to use the opportunity while the news is still Hot and our emotions are still up there to speak about the fact that a lot of us as a people will play a massive role in a lot of these things and Nigerian churches play a very terrible dangerous big role in it as well funny enough there's actually um, a tweet that people you see they say internet never forgets there's a tweet now by um Pauline Nature's wife the church that this woman the Osinachi was uh, singing at that uh, there was a tweet in which she said that um, there is no divorce let me read it let me find it and read it to you guys this is what uh, this old tweet that is going around now you know it says never make divorce an option the stress you put your children through <laughs> may affect them for the rest of their lives this is the church that this woman attends and now you guys want to wonder why that woman stayed till the end and this is a shrine i call it a shrine dunamis is a shrine because i made another video i don't know which one i'm posting for which i've shown you signs that cannot be a gathering about the same god that jesus came to tell us about a church where the pastor is telling people we should go heart attack and high blood pressure calling somebody a mad dog okay she said this is for nature's wife says never make divorce an option at all meaning no matter the circumstances right and it says the stress you put your children through when you oof, and the one you put them through when you are alive separated from their father let's 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 reason together the mother is alive somewhere else and their father is alive somewhere else and the children can go see their father go see their mother and have two of them alive but apart is that not better than the story of Osinachi right now that she's going into the grave where is she now he said the stress you put your children through may affect them okay what about the stress now that her exit her leaving this world the stress that is going to cause for her children i made a video which i was saying that you see pastoring is not a it's not sexually transmitted because your husband is a pastor does not make a wife automatic pastor i really hope i'm making sense because your husband is a pastor does not make you a pastor this is a pastor this is what a woman is saying but this is a pastor, Abi. He said, would we affect them through the rest of their life. Most wayward or rough children are products of divorced parents. That is an insult in the life of a lot of people. It is an insult in the life of a lot of people. Where did she even get her statistics from? There are a lot of children from broken homes that are the amazing human beings. Obama's parents were not together. Bill Clinton, we have heard the story of his father and mother. Her husband, Paul Neche, I don't know if his parents were divorced, but this man stood at the pulpit he called the altar of God and called somebody a mad dog. I don't believe 
that was what he got from his home where they raised him. That was a wayward behavior. I probably don't think Polenecha is from a broken home. And then she goes on to say, so shine your eyes before you say I do. Let me tell you, nobody goes into a marriage. Let me tell nobody knows it all. There's something that happens at the beginning where people show you their best side. But later on, they begin to show you a side they never showed you before. It happens. If you have to shine eye, do you know how many Nigerian pastors have divorced their wives? Some have remarried. I made a post the other day showing some pastors, Nigerian pastors. There were a list of them there. Iginla is divorced and remarried. Pastor Chris Okoti, I think he has remarried three times, if I'm not mistaken. You know, Chris Oyagilome is divorced. So people do not get what I was showing in that post. They will not be the only ones with marriage problems. A lot of us have shared our stories or whatever our lives have been like. But it was something for us to sit back and reflect on. Now she's saying, shine, singles, shine your eye. She didn't even say pray about it. She said, shine your <laughs> You say, so shine your eyes before you say, I, I do. She didn't even say pray before you say, I do. She said, shine your eyes. You're going to tell me that Chris Oyahidome, as mighty as he is, and all the miracle that he does, a person like him can, he did not, he did not see it coming. Did he know it was going to be divorced? Of course not, he didn't know it. You see that nobody knows it all. But those are their own marriages. These are still together in the eyes of the world. You know, I, because let me tell you, marriage being together and marriage being together in the eyes of the world are two different things. They're not the that the marriages have already ended. But it's the world that does not know it's ended. But it's a couple inside that know that it's ended. There's a woman here that, she beat the one that made the video say, when I was going to my husband's room, and people were like, the way, I can't remember how she phrased it, and people were like, okay, there was something not right about the, the way she presented it, it showed that they were, they were married but they are not together. But unfortunately, society goes by the ones that they still see standing side by side. Some people know how to fake it in the eyes of the world. Is it not in our presence here that the, what is that called now? Justin and, uh, what's it called? Uh, Justin and uh, Ora. We saw a week before they had their baby, they were dancing together. One week later, they were already divorced. Just like that. You know, when people talk about failed marriage, if people think it's a, a failed marriage is... You know, people, just people that got divorced or people that went their separate ways. Let me tell you, what is the meaning of a failed marriage? Think about it like this. If a, a product is supposed to do a particular thing and that product is not doing what is meant to do, that product is a failed product. You get my point? If you're a blender, it's supposed to blend and it's not blending well. It's a failed blender. Let me, I'm just using that as an example, right? A marriage is supposed to be a loving relationship where two people come to love each other be there for each other and all of that if you are still together in a, a marriage but you are not doing what you're supposed to do the marriage is not what it's supposed to be you are beating and fighting each other it's already a failed marriage it is not because you are still together that makes it not failed it has failed to be what it's supposed to be a lot of the jiggles you're looking at there are a lot, a lot of them in failed marriages but they come out in the eyes of the world and pretend that's one aspect i want to address Osinachi's marriage was a failed marriage. They were not a good match for whatever reason. I saw big pictures of her. She's actually a university graduate. I don't know about her husband. I don't know, but when I'm looking at him, I may be wrong. I'm thinking maybe he's not educated. And that can be causing some of his inferiority complex. And that he feels that the only way he can then boost his ego is by controlling her. She's the one with the talent. She's the one with an education. She's the one that everybody knows her face. So it was a failed combination of two people. They were they no match. If you look, if you're looking from what we are seeing now, that was already a failed marriage. The marriage where there's already beating, fighting, whatever, is already failed marriage. It's not the ones that have already gone their separate ways. At the same time, now everybody is an opera. Everybody is talking. Everybody is da, 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 da. a lot of us as people. We play a massive role in this thing. You will see people that will laugh at somebody and say, you get husband, you don't get husband. Uh, look at me, I have been married for 50 years. Look at me, I've been married for 10 years. Look at me, I've been married for 20 years. And somehow that person feels above other people. It's the same people that are not coming out and shouting, if marriage, if they are beating you, don't stay. If they are beating you, don't stay. Those women that you have laughed at and said, you know that sentence, say she not last for husband house. That you don't even wait to find out why she left the marriage before you voice such comments. You are a contributor. Everybody is coming at now. Hey, what's in that year? A lot of people, they are the contributors to the reasons why some women stay. Because they don't want the stigma of a divorcee. Another point that is important is this. If Osinachi had divorced her husband, you think Polenecha will let her sing in his church? It's a lie. It's a big lie. He will not let her sing in the church. Because she will not be good for the brand. They have an image they are trying to portray to the world. She would not fit in. A lot of people that are inviting her to come and sing will not invite her because how do you invite a divorcee to come and sing in your church? They will be frowning at her. 
everybody now is saying, the, 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 I want everybody to sit back and reflect. I have reflected myself. Reflect and begin to see. We learn. We learn every single day. Sometimes we sit back and learn something new. This is a story to make a lot, a lot of us re reflect and ask ourselves in what way we may be contributing to the problem. Everybody is shouting now. She should have left. She should have done. Don't stay there. Don't do that. What have you done with the ones that left? You are the ones that laugh at them and say, huh, "She's from a broken home." Now talking about the people that knew the story and did not speak. People are saying, "Why didn't you speak? Why did you do this?" I just laugh. Because our society have been built like this by us, the people, for such a long time. I made a video here. You know when they were saying that when she wants to go and sing, she be begging people to beg her husband to let her go and sing. You see one thing, eh? there's something they say that in my language, the truth, the truth stands straight. It doesn't stand like this or stand like this. No, the truth, the truth stands straight because it is the truth. I shared the video here, which I was talking about. My parents, we used to go home for Christmas, and my mother belonged to the village women's group, the singing group, something like that. And my mother had the voice for singing in those days. She was like the best singer. He could just decide, you're not going to go to the band today. They used to go to the band. And the whole of the band cannot function because my mother is their singer, like the lead singer. I remember as a child, we went home for Christmas, and this time my parents were like, no, you're not going. And my mother was, you know, stayed at home. You know, the man just says, that's it. The village women had to come and actually beg my dad for ages to let my mother go. Just think about that. They had to come and beg, all the women, and beg that please let her come. Finally, he let her go because the other women came and begged. Along the line, the marriage went haywire. Like, they had big fights. My father tried to kill my mother at least three times. I'm not going to go into all of that. The final attempt on her life when she ran away. She ran to her people. She started living with her mother. She started living in her village. But there was so much stigma attached to that because they would say, Why are you In my language, it's like a woman that was chased away. And it was not a nice name to have. Status wise, you become the, you become the woman with that stigma. You know, financial. But my parents were split up for 10 whole years. For the whole 10 years, my mother kept on trying to come back. Not because she was in love with him, but because she wanted to re regain her status as a married woman. She wanted to regain that status so much. There was so much she couldn't do. She couldn't be part of any women's group. My mother was a singer. You know, the traditional village meeting. My mother was their singer. And she was good at it. And I remember as a child, when sometime Umuada would come to our gate, just because my father refused to let my mother go and sing with them. I love my father, but I share my story because I'm hoping it will touch people to think twice about what they do in their marriages to their wives, especially. Because some people say, why? Well, he say it doesn't happen to men. But let's be honest. I know there's some marriages where the men are the, uh, the victim, but in a lot of cases, let's be honest, because the man physically, God has built a man in a way that man is physically stronger. It gives an upper hand. Our society, stigmatization of a single mother or a divorced woman. It's not the same for a man. Our men don't get stigmatized for being divorced. It is the women that get stigmatized. So that's why the women are the ones that suffer the consequences. And that's why there's this opera speaking for women. Because we know what our society has allowed, tolerated us, promoted, promoted even for such a long time. Going back to my mother's story, my remember as a child, every woman had their specialty. So women are the organe player, do, do player, whatever. Umwada will come to our gate to come and beg my father to let my mother come. Because without my mother, the band cannot play. My mother was the singer. You see, when these stories happen, you know, I don't... When these things happen, it, it just... It brings back so much memory. Especially when it's a story that matches my story. Now that they say husband doesn't allow her to go and sing, people have to ask the husband first. They will beg the husband first. But it brought back memories. They will beg my father and beg my father. Sometimes they will agree. So without him agreeing, my mother could not go and sing with the band. And without my mother, band cannot sing for the day. And I came here. I've shared my stories. I was laughed at for sharing my stories. Hey, you know the shame. He go come for social media. He's sharing her story. He say my father beat my mother. Let's forget. Let's be honest. The hypocrisy. People should sit back and ask themselves, what role have I played in promoting this terrible thing happening in our society? And now we're hearing all Sinachi is dead and people are talking. Everybody is talking. What happened to those that spoke and shared their story? Guess what? Right now, all Sinachi's children, all Sinachi's children are just like myself. When they open a YouTube channel tomorrow and share the story about how their father beat their mother, somebody will say, you're sharing your, you have no shame. You're sharing by your parents. And now some people are saying, why do people not talk? What have you people, what have people done to those of us that spoke? I'm going to say this. There are some amazing people that my stories have touched them. So you could have made them think twice. There are some people that value when I share stories like that. But I'm saying this for those that say, why did this one not talk? Why did that one not talk? Why did this one not? Well, we're not looking for people to be open and share freely. What have we done with those that shared freely? I have been called shameless. 
for sharing my story. And I say, I'm hoping. I remember one story I shared. They said she kicked her. Did I not share the story of my father kicking my mother? Where's the difference? I shared the story of my father kicking my mother. And my mother... It was a kick. It was a kick. She was sitting on the floor. The video is still here on YouTube. And I walked up to her and I grabbed her hand. And um, um, that is a memory that would never leave me. I grabbed her hand. I walked up to her and I called her and she didn't answer. And I called her again and she didn't answer. And... I grabbed her hand, and I grabbed her hand, and I and her hand fell back down, and um, and then I started screaming, and I was crying, and I was, and when I remember when I remember this story, why that's why it's hard for me to share it. When I remember the story, I am more upset for, I'm more upset for the pain that I had to go through seeing that than anything else. It upsets me that I had to see that. It upsets me that at my age I had to experience that, because that experience haunted me for haunted me for a long time. The difference is that, thank God, my mother survived it. I told you guys that my mother basically, I said my mother basically died. And we cried. We were crying. We were young, we were crying. I said it's by the grace of God that my mother came back to life. Look at that story, look at my story. What's the difference? The only difference is that my mother survived. You guys know, I've shared stories here, and I, you guys know I love my father so much. But I'm, I'm going to be honest, if I want our story to change people or touch people's hearts, I have to be honest and share it exactly how it happened, with the hopes that it can touch somebody or change somebody or change society in any way. Today, what's in our children? I experienced what I experienced almost 40 years ago. Because we can come here and say, point your hand at the, at the man, Mr. Onwajuku, you know, eh, one, Mr. Peter Onwajuku, da 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 da. Society we want to change, it starts with you and I. A lot of us are the ones that gag people from speaking. So until a lot of these things change, stigmatization of a woman that is divorced, keeping secrecy because you know, you don't share your family secret. They say, they say I've shared all my family secret because I shared the story of my parents fighting or my father beating my mother, depending on how you want to phrase it. All those things play a massive role. I'm sharing this now because now it is hot news. We are seeing it, everybody is all up in their emotions. Everybody is coming outside to come and talk. Then give it one week. Everybody will go back inside. Everybody will enter house and move on and wait for another Osinachi to happen before we come out and start talking again. You know, anyways, I just wanted to use because this story, I really wanted to share a lot about this woman's story now that it is hot. Because I know our people, once the story is cold, you know, go touch anybody anymore. And I felt like this is a good time to speak now that it's still touching people. See if I can reach more people now that it is hot. I want to use this opportunity to remind us to reflect as individuals and ask ourselves in what way may we be playing parts in this society that we have? In what ways can we change or contribute in a change that we're looking for? In what way? Before people point finger at another person, look at me, I am 10 years married, you are not even, look at me, I am 12 years married, you are not even, you are playing a part. And then when you laugh at people that run away from their own homes, Remember all of this. That's basically all I want to share in this video. Think about it because the world you are pointing at, that needs to change, that needs to change. You can't really go there and force people to change. The people you can actually change, most of the time, people we can change are ourselves. If everybody reflects and we all change, that's how we can change, you know, our society. Basically, that, this, that's what this video is about. It's about giving us reasons to sit back and self-reflect and see how we can help with this situation. Um, I'll leave this video here and as always whatever your opinions are feel free to leave them in the comment section below and with that i'm going to say thank you for watching until the next time guys bye bye bye